as seen on Kaleidoscope the Series. Kaleidoscope the Series on ABC 23. It's a different look at our region, unique places you may not know exist, unique people sharing their amazing talents. There are good things happening in our area. Watch it all every Sunday on Kaleidoscope the Series on ABC 23. Welcome back. Recently, I got to do something that very few get the opportunity to do. It meant being up before the sun and heading out into the middle of nowhere practically. But this was all to see this face of a baby elk or a calf as they are known. Isn't she adorable? And she's one of over a thousand elk in Pennsylvania. Right after her and some others are born in the spring, elk biologists head out to tag some of them and check them out, make sure they're okay after birth. And for those who were there to get an education up close and personal. The first few days of life when they're first born, they are not big enough or strong enough to keep up with mom. And so what they'll do is they'll bed down and just hide. It's, we, we call it the hider strategy. And it's usually like the first one to five, maybe six days of life that they're just gonna, their instinct is just to lay down and not move. And that's an anti-predator strategy, if you will. They have very little scent at that time. And so they're just trying to, to hide and not make any, any motion. And the, the point is, if you can find them, you can kind of just grab them. So we always go out first thing in the morning, basically as soon as we can see, and we start covering ground. I have a, a multitude of people that are helping me, and we'll all break up into different areas, cover ground around um, preferred habitat, open spaces, grasslands, things like that, and just look for the loner cows. And then if the loner cow is there, we'll look for the udder. If the udder is there, we'll see if they are reluctant to flee. And then if that, all those three things are there, we'll just start looking for the calves. And generally speaking, the calves are... Um, like you have to practically step on them to find them, right? They're in, in grass that by early June is usually up to your waist, if not higher. And so they're very camouflaged. Again, nature evolved that way to, that, that they don't really want to be found. Um, but if we, we use people, you know, we use numbers um, and then technology as much as we can to, to find those things. In order to find them though, we, we typically look for mom. And so we'll look for three different, or three behaviors in the cow. Uh, and it kind of it, it builds our, our uh, suspicion that there's a calf nearby. Um, the first is that it, she'll be alone, right? So the cows will separate from the rest of the, the herd when they go to calf. Again, that's probably an anti-predator anti strategy that they've evolved with over the years. Second thing is they will always develop um, udder. They'll, they'll, the milk will come in prior to calving. And then the last thing is reluctance to flee. So if we start looking around, if we start walking toward them or, or kind of checking out the area, are they going to stick around? Like, are they reluctant to flee? And if those three things are there, loner, developed udder, and then reluctance to flee, there's more than likely a calf in that area, and we'll just search around until we can either find it or, you know, sometimes we, we can't find it, and we'll just abandon that situation and move on to the next one. Okay, so you notice we're never letting her up. Like, we're not putting a lot of pressure on her, but we're just keeping her, you know, pinned down to the ground. If um, she's not being real active, but if she was trying to squirm or get away or something like that, I might straddle her and just keep my weight up off of her and keep her down. Looking at the hooves, again, I would encourage you to do this when you're when you're down here getting your pictures, is just kind of feel this stuff around. No fleshy material on the hooves. Little soft, I mean, they're tough back here. They're tough on the outer edge. They're, they're pretty soft on the inside there still. So, you know, we might pull a weight to get a final age guess here, but I, I mean, it's an older calf. She is pretty big. Um, so I'm going to say four or five days old. I'm just kind of curling her up like a little pie plate in here. Let's go 38.3. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Not a sound. Aww. Not a sound. Must be a female. It is. Yeah, it is for sure. So We will often bring groups with us simply to get additional people involved in the process, right? So um, we're a public agency. We manage a public resource. That is the elk. Um, and so we're trying to bring in um, volunteers or, or our partners, essentially, for example, the Keystone Elk Country Alliance. We're trying to bring them in and get them more involved with elk management and, and how we specifically manage their elk or, or the citizens of, of Pennsylvania. The, the elk belong to them. And so we're trying to get those groups involved in that process. Uh, for the Keystone Elk Country Alliance, it's really important for us to be able to involve not only our members, but members of the general public with the elk calf capture event each year. It allows them to be a part of elk country, to understand the importance of having a healthy herd and um, what our work along with the Pennsylvania Game Commission does to help ensure that that happens. 
Sure, it's always an enjoyable, enjoyable experience to handle a wild animal and get to see that up close and, and see the process, especially when it's a newborn calf or something like that. Um, so it, it's exciting for uh, those volunteers because it's something they've never done. It's probably something they probably will not do necessarily in the future. Um, it's different when you're a biologist and that's what you're paid to do and that's your job. Uh, but it's, it's obviously very unique for um, groups that haven't done that before. It might be very foreign to them or something like that. So it's, it's got to be exciting and, and we can see that in their, you know, their reaction and their comments afterward. I enjoy just getting up close and personal, being able to see an elk calf, um, you know, within a few days of birth, and just being able to give an example of how small they are when they're born and how quickly they do age and grow up to be those uh, big adult animals. Female, um, we'll say three days old. Again, there's some variation there, but um, questions on any of that so far? Who found it? We did. Good job. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Essentially the same way that we would measure and weigh and examine a human baby when they're born just to make sure everything is where it should be. It's the same thing with elk, right? We're not going to do it on all of them, but we're going to take a subsample of the whole population and just make sure that the animals are being born at the weights they should be and, and everything is kind of moving the way we expect it to and this is just a, a validation of that. At the same time we will ear tag any animal that we handle just so that we know in the future um, if we see it again that we were that we did handle it at that time and we have some preliminary data on it. Not a sound. <laughs> Early on like that, it's just a, it's a monitoring exercise to make sure that the reproductive cycle is working the way that it should. So over the years as we collect uh, additional data and it gets built up and we can develop trends, uh, basically we can see that the weights are where they should be. There is a slight disparity between male calves and female calves. Average weight would be probably right around 32, maybe 35 pounds, somewhere in that range. Males are a little bit heavier than, than females, but again, we're just trying to confirm that everything is, is where it should be. Um, and that the breeding cycle is, is occurring as we would expect it to. What does a growing elk population necessarily mean for uh, the residents of Pennsylvania or the citizens of Pennsylvania? One, it, it is a tremendous tourist, tourism draw, right? So a lot of people do come up here on an annual basis to look at elk um, and, and see the, their, the, the management of, of their elk in, uh, in the real world. Um, and then a second part of it is uh, through the elk hunt, right? So we're providing an elk hunting opportunity. Additional animals means that we can put out additional tags um, and provide an elk hunting opportunity for other residents of Pennsylvania.